Oh, yes, the Hap V theory. Thanks for asking. I knew that you would sooner or later get around to that question. Um, it really is a game changer. Um, look, I, I'm not so sure that the word um, uh, developing uh, or in inventing the Hap V theory might best accommodate what went on here. Um, perhaps the term rediscovering the contextual premise with which to test the veracity of those individual practices that are brought together to create something greater than the sum total of its individual part, which is what, of course, Kanta represent, might better describe the nature of the uh, Hapvi theory. Look, um, uh, before I stumbled over this, I suppose, is one way of saying it. Uh, there were many theories surrounding how kata worked. And look at they 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 range from the sublime to the mundane. And uh, the only one thing that I will remember for sure is uh, that nobody knew, really, uh, what kata was act definitively used for, you know. And um, it's because some some of the theories were just right out of this world, and and uh, but of course um, I think that when you contrast the modern uh, practice of karate with what we believe its original practices were, the only one thing that truly remains intact are these um, geometrical configurations, and. Uh, Look, for the lack of a better description, uh, when I say remain intact, I, what I mean to say is, uh, and in spite of the variations on the cosmetic appearance of uh, what were possibly more original progenitor practices, um, they still contain what we believe the are, are the so-called secrets, the application practices. Uh, of a time perhaps lost in, in, the, in the annals of mankind. And so um, I was very motivated and very passionate about this study. And um, so I started looking at, um, of course, the kata from all styles. And then I started to, uh, you know, using this outside the box mentality to look at, uh, you know, forms and routines, hyung, um, punsei, kata, chuan, taolu, whatever you want to call them, these, you know, routines uh, based in other fighting arts. Um, and uh, and it didn't stop there. I, I looked at uh, uh, old practices from, oh gosh, uh, Kano, Jigoro's, uh, Turn of the century studies of ju modern jujitsu. Uh, I looked at um, uh, some of the uh, European uh, medieval uh, combative treaties. Arto di Mancia, Hans Telhofer's uh, was an absolutely wonderful source. And of course, you know, I was uh, very wrapped up at the time uh, with uh, uh, both Japanese swordsmanship from the uh, Katori Shinto Ryu school, and uh, Western swordsmanship as well, because I I, I certainly preferred uh, function over yeah. over empty ritual, as it were. And um, I, you know, I a lot of people don't know this today, but I had a a big background in Chinese in Southern Chinese fighting arts. Uh, in fact, when I started teaching, oh gosh, uh, forty five years ago or whatever, nineteen seventy three is. Um, I started out as uh, teaching Southern Chinese Kung Fu, uh, specifically Hungar. So I was very familiar with two-person drills. And um, interestingly enough, what would, I suppose, really spark my interest was when I got uh, involved with the shoot fighters in Japan in the late 1980s and it became, um, you know, a kind of a, a live-in training partner, so to speak, for uh, the snake pit uh, that... UFI fighters in uh, in Tokyo, and the interesting part about that group was a lot of the drills that they used, when rehearsed uh, individualistically, looked 
almost identical to the templates of various kata that we practice today. And upon questioning, you know, my colleague said, gee, hey, Takara-san or, you know, uh, Sakurabo, <laughs> what are you doing there? That looks like Naihanshi. And I would get responses, oh, <laughs> Patrick, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know anything about karate, but these are just, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, um, you know, we're kind of reviewing how I escaped from the guillotine and so on and so on and so forth. And that was a huge, big, uh, uh, I call them BFOs, you know, blinding flash of the obvious, if you will, or the epiphanies one experiences when it just becomes blatantly obvious what these things are. So anyway, I, the point here is that I started looking outside the box in order to establish a contextual premise uh, with which to test the veracity of these individualistic templates. Now, keep in mind that my theory was r relatively simple. As the uh, the uh, I believe the kata were created from the uh, the uh, one portion of a two-person drill. The drill uh, first. Um, quantified or identified a specific act of physical violence. And that's how we best understand the dynamics of why these things are dangerous in the first place. And by doing so, it it creates or provides the basis upon which to further investigate what um, tactical or technical science um, can be best used against it to escape counter and overcome it. And then by using a process of uh, passive resistance in which to learn, and then a progressive ascent exponentially using aggressive resistance uh, uh, to test its veracity, uh, the end result is a kind of a functional competency with regards to how it works. And when you separate the two, and then you, you know, kind of uh, 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 ritualize the, the uh, uh, the uh, application practice into a template, which, when linked together with other such templates from other uh, defensive applications against, uh, again, acts of physical violence that are habitual in human nature, and linked them together into a specific geometry, the end result is to create something greater than the sum total of its individual parts. And this, of course, was my, you know, part of my happy theory at the time. And, and so looking uh, at circumstances that were common and repeated enough in, 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 in society, in domestic society, um, uh, I was able to identify uh, specific acts as habitual. And then, of course, I, I, I grouped these together into a set, was a, it was a long process, actually, uh, you know, to identify and eliminate and, and, and so on. Um, the end result was uh, we're, we're grouping together these 36 acts of physical violence um, into a systematized method of, uh, of learning and uh, practicing and, and then training. So I, I'm hoping that that has provided... A, um, an answer that's sufficient. <laughs> I suppose a more succinct uh, response to that question might have simply been the Hap V theory best explained my reasoning for understanding kata. 